we are here at the Girl Lounge since CES 2019, and we just had an amazing panel about science fiction and facts. And I would like to start asking you about your background and also that you actually did an amazing shout out before we actually started the sci-fi session today. So if I could kind of ask you to do that again. Oh, wonderful. Oh, and it's, uh, well, um, I'm Dr. Yvonne Cagle. I'm an astronaut and a retired Air Force flight surgeon. Um, and I've been in love with science and space and exploration since I, uh, since actually July 1969 when we landed on the moon. And true to form, we've come full circle. It's now been half a century, 50 years, 2019, since we landed on the moon. First and only time ever. And so you gave me a wonderful opportunity to pay tribute to Dr. Katherine Johnson, who is that NASA mathematician who was very instrumental in enabling the calculations for the spaceflight trajectory, not just to land humans on the moon, but also preceding that around the Earth and even the first American into space. So this is an opportunity for us to really reflect on the contributions that women have given all throughout history. And for Dr. Katherine Johnson, from her, as I said, her quiet spirit to her quantum performance, she really is that picture of fearlessness under fire. She is that woman of wonder who brings precision to the mission. And she is also that, that intrepid legacy whose legend not only stuck the landing for humans on the moon, but right now is serving as a blueprint to enable future generations to launch their moonshots and land their dreams. You talk about moonshots, and could you talk about the moonshot because you have an amazing background and achievements. Let's talk about your journey and where you are today. Wow, well my journey started uh, as at my earliest memory just with curiosity and discovery. And I think even today, decades later, I'm still trying to catch up with that journey. And that journey has been the draw that's taken me through a wonderful relationship with um, STEM, STEAM. I like to call it teams for technology, engineering, art, math, science, because I think it's very collaborative. And it brought me into medicine because I wanted to learn how the human body worked, but even more importantly, how it adapted and changed when you stepped off the planet. And of course, after my service in the military, um, I knew then that I really wanted to work with um, a team that was pushing the envelope um, higher up in the atmosphere and even off planet. And so today I have a wonderful opportunity to um, learn about not just the human body, but how to help sustain the human body, how to accelerate restorations using fabrications and wearables so that we can not just survive, but discover new frontiers as we go to moon, Mars, and beyond. So during our conversation, we spoke about science fiction, science fiction in fact, and how we bring science fiction into the corporate world. And uh, I asked the question about uh, what is some of your favorite, I actually said one favorite science fiction, <laughs> and uh, some of the things that you see has become reality today. I would love that you could you talk about this together because you had a number of science fiction movies That's right. uh, that you brought out. Yes, I sort of, uh, sort of, I don't know, for lack of a better word, when you think about aliens, I kind of abducted um, that, that answer. Um, it's so difficult as an astronaut because there are so many parts of so many entertainment platforms that really make your mind spin. Um, but some of the salient ones that were kind of milestones for me started with Fantastic Voyage when I was little and really just uh, enthralled with the human body. And to be able to actually, this, this science fiction story where you could miniaturize yourself and go in a, a spaceship that a life ship that would allow you to go through and learn and discover and even influence or fix things in the human body, heal things in the human body, that's, that's where I wanted to land. To me, that was my off planet, that was my universe. Um, and we can do that today. And so I'm glad that I stayed with that kind of um, 
science fiction fiction experience because from there it took me to things like space cowboys which is just so much fun it talks about you know the training and the preparation but it really reinforces that if you're not having fun you're doing something wrong and to do it with friends and colleagues where you can explore together it just doesn't get any better than that and then certainly I went on to the Martian and that made me want to go from a Mars visitor to a Mars colonizer because I think that the sequels to The Martian are really where the journey begins. And then um, it comes full circle because my all-time favorite movie is actually a cartoon, Miles from Tomorrowland, that I had the opportunity to be one of the characters in in one of the episodes. And it really reinforced in my mind that STEAM, teams, science fiction, bridging into science fact starts with the curiosity of the mind and to have permission to imagine. And so if we start at very young ages, we shape a mind that not only wants to go to Mars and live, but take, take it far beyond anything we've ever imagined before and kind of write our own science fiction from science fact. So we look, when we look at imagination, um, and we spoke about in the panel today about uh, innovation for the door and how we have all these amazing immersive technologies and what is kind of like holding things back right now is our mm -hmm. imagination. Do you predict that science fictions will be a mindset that will be much more used going forward in the corporate world? Oh, yes, absolutely so. Um, science fiction kind of is is the framing. It really takes down borders and creates bridges in our mind. And when we learn how to dream together, then we can learn how to work together. And when you work together, then you can explore together. But I think it's very important that we understand that times are different now. Before, we could only build, oh, let's see, we could only design what we could build. We were limited by our engineering. But now, we are not only have AI, machine learning, all of these innovations, they're immersive. So we can build what we want to design, and we're only limited by our dreams and our imagination. And so if we take that into the corporate environment, it really opens up opportunity for inclusion and resiliency in our corporate structure that can only make us more robust as a nation, a globe, and a planet. So a lot of people are inspired based on what you what you you like have in your backpack, what you have experienced. Uh, uh, so nobody will think it's uh, weird when you speak about science fiction. <laughs> but but what is your advice to uh, to to people in the corporate world? Because some people can feel that it's awkward them to bring in the science fiction and still being seen as a very serious you know, uh, person. So what is your recommendation uh, to the copper world to get started on science fiction? Ah, wow. Um, sort of like what we do in space. Space used to be a destination, and now it's really a demonstration platform for innovation and what we can do. It's still a destination, but it makes so much more possible. So I think um, it's very important for corporate environments to... Um, test and to demonstrate and to innovate and have that agile front door that is very open to new ideas. And I think when you start just stepping out, kind of like we step off the planet and start demonstrating what could be possible, only then do we start to break down what we think is impossible. So as a woman, um what is some of your advice? Because you can say we don't have a lot of women astronaut. Uh, we can s clearly say that. So what uh, is your advice? You talk about dream, just, you know, get out there, do it. Uh, what is your, some of your really good advice to women out there in the world uh, who are very inspired by what you have achieved, but for them really to get going? Um, I think I have um, at, at least three main points. Um, first of all, if you see it, you can be it. And if you can be it, then you can make that change. So the first thing is to see it in your mind. And that's why I love science fiction, because you get to imagine in 
your own narrative, your own story, and you can restory it and you can place yourself in there. So you can start to see a reality where you can be part of that teams. Um, the second thing is to not be afraid to learn the skills that will allow you to demonstrate and iterate on those ideas because then you can start to invent and really go places with that. So go ahead and learn coding and go ahead and learn 3D printing and go ahead and learn any of those sort of um, teams-based skills that doesn't require that you go to an advanced you know, degree or university, but we have, you know, women who code of all um, cultures, and we have opportunities really for everyone to get involved. So you can get those skills, and you can do it collaboratively online these days even. Um, do it yourself, and, you know, just different ways to, to, to develop and team together to build in and build out your ideas is so important. And then the last thing is to not shy away from entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So if you're knocking on a lot of doors and no one's answering, kind of build your own door. Open it up and glass doors are only glass because we haven't yet placed the, 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 the doorknobs to it and that's something that we can collectively build and innovate together. Thank you so much for such an inspiring conversation. And uh, I look forward to our sci-fi journey. It's going to be great. Uh, I'm on board. <laughs>